Hey folks, we are here doing another video to make sure you can go elk hunting this year. And last video we did was Wyoming. This video is Arizona. Because in Arizona, I've got four points. Marcus has three. three. Michael has two and Dale has zero. <laughs> but he has a license this year because he applied for javelina tag. So if you already have the license, you may as well swing for the fences and throw your name in the hat. So we're gonna talk about how Arizona system works. Uh, we're gonna put some diagrams up here, courtesy of our friends at Go Hunt. Go to gohunt.com, sign up for the insider, use promo code Randy, get $50 of mad money in their gear shop, and put your name in the hat for a Wyoming commissioner's tag. A couple things you need to know is February 11th is a very important date. In addition to it being my anniversary, this year it happens to be the deadline for Arizona elk and antelope. So don't miss it. Because if you miss it, Arizona doesn't have one of these, oh, I'll buy a point later in the season periods like Wyoming does, Montana does. No. Arizona, you got to be in the hopper or you're out of luck. So, got to buy a license. 160 bucks for a non-resident hunting license. $5 for a non-resident youth license. So everyone asks, how did, how did Matthew get 18 points, my son? When he was a kid, at age 10, he was applying in Arizona, it cost me all the five bucks. So if you have a youngster in your household, build points for him in Arizona, because it's really cheap. How the draw works is non-residents are capped to 10%, kind of like they are in Idaho and Montana Arizona, all three of those states have the non-residents can have up to 10%. Doesn't mean you're guaranteed 10% as non-residents, but up to. So for every hunt code in their regulations, I always go download the regulations, they split it into two pieces. The very first part of the draw, they take 20% of the tags that go over here, and it's really like a preference point draw more than anything. Mm -hmm. The people with the most points get those tags in that first 20%. Everybody goes in the drawing for the 20% of the tags and they just go down the list. Whoever has the most points gets a tag until they're all out of tags. And one little sub quota in that first part is even though we as non-residents can get 10% of the total, that 10%, only half of it can be picked up in this first part of the draw. That leaves at least the other half of the non-resident quota over here for the lower point holders. So, everyone's going to be in this draw. Odds are if you're at low points, you're not going to draw in the first part. And then you go over into the draw for the remaining 80% of the tags, and it's a true bonus point system. I'm going to have four raffle tickets this year. Marcus is going to have three. You're going to have two. Well, plus we each get a raffle ticket for each point, plus your current year application. So Dale has no points, he gets one random number, but he might have the lowest random number of all of us, you never know. Yeah. And you're gonna get three, I'm gonna get five, and you're gonna get four. Yeah. And what they do is they take your lowest random number of my five, and that's the random number I get to use when I go into the draw. And they repeat that for everybody. So, I have a little bit better chance of having a lower random number than you because I get five and you get four. Yep. And I got a little bit even more better chance than you because I've got five, you got three. Mm -hmm. And I got a five times greater likelihood than Dale because he's only got one. Here's the other interesting part in Arizona. They give you five choices, I think. They look at your first choice and your second choice before they go on to the next person. So from a strategy standpoint, you're well served to swing for the fences with your first choice because they look at your first and second. So I always do some crazy thing as my first choice and then something that, okay, this is a little more reasonable as far as my point level, the draw odds are a little right. more reasonable. So think about it that way. 20% of the tags go in the first draw based on the most points. 80% of the, the remainder goes in a second draw and that's a true bonus point, or yeah, bonus point system. And always take advantage of your two choices. Choices third, fourth, fifth, 
there's never enough tags left over that we as non-residents are going to get any of them. So I pretty much ignore that part. Depending on what point level you have, you look at Gohan and you see the draw odds. It's like, well, Marcus has three points. Um, your odds of an early archery tag aren't very good. No. <laughs> <laughs> and if Marcus's aren't very good, yours are less good, Michael. <laughs> Uh, so Arizona has early archery hunts that this year, I think it's September 10th or 11th until the 24th or something like that. So there's always the September hunts. Then right after that, they have some early rifle and the early muzzleloader hunts. Uh, those are the really hard ones to draw. And then after that, it, most of their hunts go to the late rifle hunts which are always, just about always, the Friday after Thanksgiving, and they run for six days, I think. There are some late archery hunts in November that start two weeks before Thanksgiving, if I remember right, and end on Thanksgiving Day. And so, as we're looking at the late archery hunts, the November archery hunts, Actually, a chance. Yes. all of a sudden, people with two, three, four points, your odds become 20, 21, 30% yeah. in some of those. But it's got to be a challenge. I can't imagine. Yes, and you're going to lose all your points. Yeah, that's, that's true. If yeah. you do that. Then the muzzleloader hunts. Again, the early muzzleloader hunts are really hard to draw. The, there are some November muzzleloader hunts that are much easier to draw. Early rifle hunts are just about <laughs> zero. I mean... Even people with maximum points, which is 25 points this year, I believe it'll be, they're barely guaranteed. Like <laughs> unit 23, if you had the maximum points, 25 points as a non-resident for the early rifle hunt, your odds are still less than 1%. That's crazy. Late rifle is what most people see us doing. Those odds range anywhere from 2% to 20%, depending on what unit and where you want to hunt and stuff like that. I drew Arizona in 2017. You came down and yep. you filmed that one with me. And right away, I jumped into the draw the next year with two points because I, Arizona, there's a way to earn one permanent point and one almost permanent point. The permanent point is to take their non-resident hunter education class. If you apply for a species for five years in a row, the sixth year, you get what's called a loyalty point. I have a loyalty point for all the species in Arizona. So when they take all my points away, they're taking away all my regular bonus points, but not my loyalty point and not my hunter ed point. So the next year, I jump in You're with two, two points. That's nice. So now I'm going to tell everybody the thing I should really keep my mouth shut about. <laughs> but you see these units right here? We have filmed three hunts there are called limited opportunity hunts because people say, Newberg, how do you guys draw so many Arizona tags? Well, if you scroll down the regulations to the bottom, it's called limited opportunity hunts. Those units are not subject to the 10% non-resident limit. Well, the hunt that you filmed in 2017, that was a limited opportunity yeah. hunt. Just because it says limited opportunity doesn't mean it's a bad hunt. You're going to have to work harder. The age classes, they hammer them pretty hard so they get you know, younger age classes. How many times have you hunted in Arizona for elk? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <sighs> but part of that is because I play the point game and I have a strategy. I've drawn an early rifle tag. I've drawn some of the two limited opportunity tags and I've drawn three late rifle tags. Every year in Arizona, they're, the numbers are going like this based on what they're seeing, what the harvest data shows, stuff like that, which is great. That tells me they're using their models, they're using the data yeah. that they get to actually manage yeah. in, to where they want to be. Right there, to me, that makes me think like better pay close attention to looking at the current year's right. tag allocations. Right. Because those percentages, while might, they might have been accurate for the last 10 years, if they changed it, right. it's going to... Obviously change the odds. There are some units are cutting bull tags in the late rifle season by 35%. If you thought your odds were 20%, mm -hmm. they just went down to about 13% or something like that. 
The great part of GoHunt is you can manipulate the data and the, all of the information and we do that. But like you said, make sure you download this year's regulations and see what the tag numbers are because if the tag numbers are going down, your draw odds are going down. But then there's some units that this year, the tag numbers are staying the same. Yeah. Go to GoHunt, go to Onyx and use promo code Randy. Because if you go to Onyx and use promo code Randy, you get 20% off the app products. When you go out to Go Hunt and sign up for the Insider, use promo code Randy and you get two things. One, you get $50 of Mad Money uh, store credit in their gear shop. And then you get put in the drawing, everyone from July 1st of 19 to June 30th of 2020. But one of you are going to get a Wyoming commissioner's tag. We're, we're going to buy one this winter. And someone who uses that promo code is going to get drawn. And we're going to say, here you go. Redeem it for an elk, a deer, or an antelope hunt. Whatever unit hunt code you want in Wyoming, see you later. Let us know how it went. So since we already have the licenses to go javelina hunting and goose deer hunting, we're crazy not to apply for the application. Or the other way around. If we buy one for the applications, we're crazy not to go goose deer and javelina yeah, hunting. All right. I'm looking at this, guys, and I don't like our odds in Arizona this year. No, it's a few, but yeah. Our best chance in Arizona is Uncle Larry is a resident, and he's got eight points. And Matthew has seven points, and he's a non-resident, so there's some of these late rifle tags he'd be guaranteed. Other than that, what do you guys call this in the TV world? A wrap? That's a wrap. Yeah, that's it's a wrap. Thanks for watching.